Hello people, in this video we will be looking at newborn history taking. This is going to be one uh, standard case in pediatrics. So the newborn usually will be normal, okay, or it could be premature or uh, have ictus jaundice. So basically just look at newborn history taking. This is very important for your pediatrics. This is the pro forma we are looking at. Just basically what and all you should ask the mother, right? <coughs> you will ask the mother uh, basic information. And then uh, any chief complaint if, the, if it is there of the newborn. And then uh, you can ask uh, her obstetric history. Past pregnancies you can ask in brief. And then present pregnancy you have to ask everything. Antenatal, natal, postnatal, <coughs> complete details. Each of this we will elaborate, uh, we will come to it. Then you will ask about the family also, any diseases in the family, housing standards, socioeconomic status, stage, status nutrition <coughs> basically. If she is able to have enough nutrition for herself and her baby okay then after this comes to history taking over now we'll come to newborn examination in newborn examination we look at general appearance vital signs anthropometry weight head to toe examination systemic examination this is what we have to look at okay so basically shall we get started people let's start off with this one now basic information that we will uh, ask uh, the patient okay basic information that we will collect okay so basic information means what what will you uh, ask the name of the baby if it is there Okay, mother's name, father's name, the age of the baby, okay, age of whom the baby, uh, hours, days, exactly date and time that it was born, okay. Mother's age also you can collect, we'll come to that. Then whether it is a male or female child and then address and their socioeconomic status if you want to you know here or in family history you can write that. Now just generally any chief complaint is there that she is uh, having like um, has the baby uh, been breastfeeding overall you know just high level immediately you can ask ictus is there anything that the mother is noticing did they give the vaccination of uh, the uh, tuberculosis and uh, oral polio vaccine which has to be given on uh, at birth right has it been given is there generally any issue that's how you want to open with the mother okay then <clears throat> if everything is fine and you can move on now you can go on to ask the mother about her obstetric history okay so you can ask the mother age, age of the mother, uh, what is her height, weight, ca ca gather her BMI, do her BMI calculation, find out her blood group and the baby's blood group. So here in the basic information of baby, we have added here the blood group of baby. Okay, this also you have to make a note. Uh, find out her para, how many times has she carried and how many children are living, how many are, ha did she abort, how many are dead, all this you have to find out. Okay. Is there uh, was her is her marriage non consanguineous marriage or consanguineous marriage? Okay, so all this you will find out. Any medical condition of the mother you want to ask, like um, uh, not related to pregnancy, we're just asking any general condition uh, of the mother if you want to know. Okay, if she's a heart patient, etc., etc., or if she has uh, any uh, uh, what what would you say diabetes, etc., etc. Then pedigree chart you have to draw of the child. Something like this you can draw to know that this is the second child of hers. <coughs> okay. This grandparents, parents, everything has been indicated. Okay, so this is uh, the pedigree chart you will draw, and uh, uh, each of the pregnancies uh, so far you will have to discuss in uh, brief. Okay, and find out whether it was a lower six men's cesarean section or it was a natural uh, vaginal delivery. What were the outcomes? Did she have any abortions? Why did she have? Or um, everything you have to find out. Okay, so this and all you will ask, right? Any complications she had in any of the pregnancies, all that can uh, affect this baby. So you should find out complete details of that. Okay. Then was it a spontaneous conception? Was she taking any contraceptive before this uh, pregnancy? Okay. So this is the recent pregnancy that she has delivered just now, right? So all this you have to collect information. Are you paying attention, guys? So you will have to ask her: um, Was this uh, conception spontaneous? Was it a planned pregnancy? Did she want the baby? When was the LMP? right um, uh, uh, then uh, what was the expected delivery or date you will calculate it right you will calculate so that you will know whether this was born premature or not then um, what else did we tell did she take folic acid before conception right uh, that and all you ask in antenatal did she take her did she have regular visits what was her weight gain then uh, did she have any uh, bleeding did she have any urinary tract infection any fever with rash were the ultrasounds done regularly all that you will ask first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, all this you will ask, right? Second trimester, when did she feel the quickening? Did she have any uh, complication then? Third trimester, was the scan done? Was any scan done? Did she have any abnormal presentation? 
did she have any uh, uh, hypertensive disorder did she have gdm etc etc did has she taken any medications what medications did she take did she have any radiation exposure all complete details you have to ask the uh, mother okay because you want to rule out any thing that could have adversely affected this child so uh, you will ask her about torch infections etc okay people now let us move on to natal okay are you ready what are we moving on now to the exact labor did she get any fever before the labor was it an induced labor was it uh, was the presentation okay <coughs> then uh, was there any fetal distress when when did the rup membranes rupture <coughs> was it a home delivery did she come to the hospital was she on any medication during the delivery and then uh, was it a forceps delivery or a vacuum delivery why was it a cesarean if it was a cesarean what was the indication was it an elective cesarean was it an emergency what uh, then uh, then what else you want to know um, so uh, she gave birth only to one baby or may, where there more than one uh, fetus that also you have to find out right was she given any anesthesia sedation etc you'll have to find out because it might affect the baby uh, crying immediately after birth so did, did the baby cry immediately after birth so all this you have to find out does she know the birth weight of the baby birth weight is very important so that you can calculate everything else right then um, uh, what was the uh, apgar score so you need to know the apgar score so this will usually be done by the doctor <clears throat> so the appearance pulse grimace activity respiration so this will be getting maximum of 10 points right so this is the scoring uh if it if it is a 7 to 10 uh, apgar score the baby is fine kind of thing they will check usually at 1 minute 5 minute 8 minute 10 minutes right whenever you think it's necessary right guys you know when when is it called a newborn or a neonate it is only up to 28 days okay then you have early neonate and uh, late neonate is it so basically you have uh, 28 days uh, up to 28 days it can be called a neonate so here we are uh, we are looking at the natal history so uh, any nicu admission if it was there that you have to ask right and then um, <clears throat> birth weight did we tell you birth weight is very important was the was the meconium stained of uh, sorry was the amniotic fluid uh, fluid stained with meconium was it foul smelling etc then uh, did we tell you that was there any fetal distress uh, when was the bre baby breastfed this is very important very important to us when was the baby breastfed what did you notice any jaundice kind of a thing in this baby is there any feeding problem did the baby pass urine right all this is important has the baby passed uh, stools that also you can ask guys then uh, and you can ask something now uh, very serious things like was there any seizure <clears throat> any bleeding any fever of the baby right all this also you can ask okay so this is all about the natal post natal what will you ask post natal seems to overlap with uh, uh, natal whatever we told you some things are uh, overlapping with post natal right so any other complication you can add here and for the mother's well being also you can ask how she is uh, about loki and all you can ask that's more of uh, obstetrics but anyways um, uh, in postnatal you can ask about the frequency of breastfeeding and uh, any uh, concerns with uh, breastfeeding and weight gain of the neonate because neonate will uh, lose its birth weight in the first week then it will gain back its birth weight by 10 days so all that is very important to know okay so you'll have to plot the uh, growth growth chart see in india the uh, ideal birth weight uh, average would be around 2.8 uh, right 2.8 so 10th day also it should be same as the birth weight the 10th 10th day weight should be same as birth weight okay. then it will start gaining because after birth it will lose weight for the first week then 10th day it will be back to its birth weight okay some very important things you have to note about neonate what and all you should know eye infections gonorrhea right eye infections then uh, uh, we wanted to talk about uh, prolonged jaundice right prolonged jaundice this can indicate what cholestasis right so this may be a surgical emergency so all these things and uh, basically uh, hypothyroidism also can lead to prolonged jaundice very very uh, uh, treatable condition so basically look for all these uh, you know if there is any respiratory distress feeding problem poor activity uh, seizure any congenital anomalies are you seeing right then uh, jaundice any bleeding fever cold to touch abdominal distension all this you have to look for okay <clears throat> constipation can uh, constipation is a different word but uh, a congenital anomalies in anomalies uh, there can be imperforate anus etc right so it won't pass stool so all this you have to look for <clears throat> anyways that they would have done in 
neonatal uh, as soon as it is born the doctor will have to check all those okay now we have finished uh, till this uh, now let us look at family history housing standards so socio economic status all this you can ask in family history if there are any genetic hereditary kind of diseases that there there are running in the family okay all that you have to ask so and check whether it can impact the baby so history is taking over now let us look at the physical examination guys here we are newborn examination we are looking at uh, so general appearance you look at the general appearance of the baby vital signs you will check like uh, pulse rate respiratory rate temperature blood pressure capillary filling time anthropometry you will check the weight length head circumference upper uh, segment to lower segment ratio you will check chest circumference also you will check weight gain we already told you about weight gain right <clears throat> then coming to head to toe head to toe what and all will you check head to toe for a newborn you can check for uh, the molding okay the molding you can check caput cephal hematoma right caput sucedaneum cephal hematoma check the fontanelle how they are then check the eyes of the baby uh, if there is any discharge from the eye there could be gonorrhea etc right is there any uh, a red reflex that is for retinoblastoma etc they are checking looks like ears the position it can indicate downs etc right the position the shape of the ears the nose any abnormality can you see some cleft palate cleft lip etc neck you check uh, your skin you check for jaundice cyanosis rashes hemangioma all that you can check okay then uh, you can also check the umbilicus the, the umbilicus of the newborn the genitalia is the testis descended is it a girl boy because you have to check whether there is any ambiguity right then uh, hypospadiasis is there any pigmentation hernia hydrocele okay the list is long right we are telling you too much the hip also is there any um, dislocation of the hip right very important to know the dislocation of the hip if it is there then um, uh, then is there any spina bifida so you have to check the spine right all that you you will check so head <clears throat> head to toe you will check all this guys now let's move on to assessment of gestational age now you have to know whether it's a preterm baby whether it's a preterm baby or not so how will you do that ballard scoring okay so in ballard scoring you have neuromuscular maturity okay one is neuromuscular and the other is physical maturity okay there are two things here first let us look at the neuromuscular maturity neuromuscular maturity they are talking about the posture of the baby the uh, square window wrist arm recoil popliteal angle scarf sign heel to ear all this they are checking in the neuromuscular and then uh, in physical maturity you will check whether uh, there is uh, how is the skin of the baby is there any that hair that fine hair lanugo <clears throat> then plantar surface how is the uh, plantar surface you should have those lines right those creases basically right are you focusing guys we are talking about what uh, whether it's a premature baby or not you should find out okay the breast buds how are the breast buds is the if it's a full area with a nice bud then it will be a, a, a mature baby or what do you call it a normal baby okay otherwise it will be a premature baby <clears throat> how's the eye the ear the genitalia if it is uh, having uh, the testis is down it has descended and there is a rugae nice rugae on the testis then it is a mature baby do you call it as a mature baby <clears throat> okay then coming to um, the genitalia of the female also they have mentioned how it should be okay so if the labia majora covers the clitoris and the minora then it is uh, a mature baby okay then you have an uh, appropriate for gestational age aga you should say whether it is an appropriate for gestational age or if it is large for the gestational age you calculated the gestational age right then you should say whether the baby is large than gestational age or smaller than gestational age so you will say whether it is large for gestational age or smaller for gestational age or is it um, appropriate for gestational age all this you will have to mention okay so this is the intra uterine growth curve see this is intra uterine growth curve which you are trying to estimate so if it is um, below uh, two standard deviation or below 10th percentile then it is small for gestational age okay here you can see if it is below 10th well, 10th percentile which they have marked here or below two standard deviation it is called a small for gestational age okay yeah people you have almost reached the end of this uh, history taking you have finished this ballard score finding out the gestational age and finding out whether it's preterm and then finding out whether it is appropriate for gestational age etc now let us move on to systemic examination okay now systemic examination <coughs> uh what and all you will check all the systems like uh, respiratory system cardiovascular system central nervous system then uh, what is what else come on one more thing is there no 
GIT. Very good. So all these systems you have to check. Okay. So you have to uh, check the respiratory system. What will you check there? Everything about the breath sounds and um, if there is any strider, uh, etc. You will find out. Okay. CVS about the S1, S2 murmurs, all that you will find out. CNS, nervous system, about the reflexes, all that you can check. GIT, you will check about the bowel sounds, whether it has passed tools, etc. So general, uh, you, overall you will check the system uh, systems. Okay. Now, uh, something we wanted to tell you here. See, at birth, you should know the reflexes that should be there, okay, in the baby. Like, uh, at birth, it will have these primitive reflexes. It will have this palmar grasp we are showing here, see. Palmar grasp, then uh, plantar grasp, then rooting reflex should be there. Then, <clears throat> moros reflex, okay. Look at this one, asymmetric tonic neck reflex. Then, the trunk incurvation, gallance reflex. Then, Landau's reflex. Then here you have this uh, down what we are mentioning here, down whatever you are seeing, the stepping reflex, okay, this one. So it will try to walk kind of a thing, okay. So this is, all these will be present at birth. Where would you put these reflexes, guys? In CNS, not so, uh, I, let, let us put one line here, okay, reflexes you will check, okay. Actually, some people are saying it should come under systemic examination, okay, we will put it here, reflexes. What is the spelling of reflexes? Reflexes, okay. So this is all about um, a newborn history taking. Now finally we will have to describe this new neat. Okay, we have to describe this new neat. So let us say uh, this is how we would say. Here is a 34 week male preterm appropriate for gestational age single baby with neonatal hyperbilirubinemia probably due to ABO incompatibility. Mother's blood group and baby's blood group incompatible. Okay, this is one way of explaining it. So, if it is a normal newborn, you will say here is a 38 uh, week um, uh, female uh, term. Okay, term is the baby. Okay, term uh, appropriate for gestational age single uterine baby with um, no complications or no complaints breastfeeding well, uh, uh, lying by the mother, all that you can say, okay. Now, um, this is all we wanted to cover in this video. Basically, we wanted to cover the neonatal history taking which we have completed, okay. So, this is the whole pro forma. This is, if you keep this at hand, just keep it in one place and you can ask all this uh, one by one when you are with the uh, patient, okay. So, you will ask the basic information, the chief complaints, if there are any obstetric history, family history, extra, newborn, you will examine the newborn completely, <coughs> okay. And uh, all this you will check, okay? That's it for now, guys. Hope you have learned something. Bye-bye.